الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم والشر امور محدثاتها وكل محتتة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها الإخوة أقوى Oh brothers and sisters I extend to you the Islamic salutations We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his grace and his mercy and his bounty to allow us to retain the information and to allow it to seep in to our hearts and to allow it to radiate within our amal, our amal, our actions and that we be grateful and appreciative for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us from al-Islam wa sunnah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Today's talk bi Allah will be a series of talks that will be based off a section that comes in a tremendous um, poem that was put together and composed by one of the greatest scholars of Al Islam, um, and that is you know him famously as Ibn Al Qayyim, Shams al Din Ibn Al Qayyim Al Jaziya, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, who have earned the title Sheikh Al Islam Al Thani, which they would call him the honorary title, the second scholar of Al Islam. And also he has the name which is known as Tabib al-Rahman, I mean Tabib al the doctor of the souls, in terms of the doctors of the, the doctor of the hearts, dealing with those issues that uh, help us correct our hearts, and the state of fears of our heart. And anyone that has the ability to graze into the works of this great illustrious scholar will see that he by the permission of Allah and only by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do not praise anyone above their uh, what they're more or what they're deserving of that he have tackled some issues and dealt with a lot of issues inshallah with the support and aid of Allah by way of his book and as by way of the ahadith that's authentically attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as the stances that was taken by the companions with Allah Allah ta'ala alayhi and this tremendous poem which, he, which is known as Al Kafiyatu Shafiyatu Al Fintisar Al Firqat Al Najiyah, which he have titled The Complete Sufficient Healer and Aiding and Supporting the Victorious Group, um, which has come famously known as Qasidat Al Nuniya or Nuniya to Ibn Uqayyim. And the reason why they call it the Nuniya of Ibn Uqayyim um, is because that each letter in the line of poetry ends with the letter in the Arabic alphabet which is known as Noon um, and this is where they divide that they call it Qasida to Nuniya however the name that I mentioned in the beginning is the name that the author gave it he didn't give it Qasida to Nuniya even though as a nickname for it it still can be known as Nuniya to Ibn Qayyim and this tremendous poetry he covers a lot of topics various different topics and there are many people who are greater than me who are more educated than me more knowledgeable than me who have reached more levels than me in al-islam that able great were able to graze into these different um sections of the poem which is over five thousand and some lines of poetry that the author have written down and if anyone know poetry in arabic is kind of difficult especially keeping in line with the cinch the symmetric the sy uh, symmetrics and actually the, um the the rhythm and so forth that he put forth this 5,000 lines in aiding and supporting those who hold firm. He has a segment, or a section rather, that deals with what Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared of the reward for those who cling firmly to his book and to the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the times of corruption, during the times when the affairs are corrupted. 
during the times when there are trying times. So I wanted to take this section to do a series of talks just based off of this. We will be using the um, explanation of Alamata Sheikh Muhammad wa Saleh Earth Amin Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alay um, in comment on this section here. I want you to pay attention what the author is able to do, especially in the time that we live in. Especially in the time that we live in. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says in the hadith of Abi Najah al Irabad ibn Usariyah Allah Ta'ala Alayhi he said to the companions he says فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشُ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَّرَخْ تِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا he said, for anyone from amongst you who will live after the period, meaning who will live afterwards, they will see many differing, many things that will be in contradiction to that of the Sharia to Allah, as well as the Sharia to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that which is in contradiction to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, for alaykum, if you reach that time, then he gave you something which you should do. He said, For alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa'i rashidin al mahdiin. He said, Then upon you is to hold firm to my sunnah, to my tariq, to my methodology, to what I was upon, to what I hold firm to, what I act on, what I believed, what I said, what I uh, prohibited, what I commanded, so forth. And then he said, Hold firmly to the sunnah of the rightly God of khulafa. And the ulama, they say the rightly God of Khulafa is from Abu Bakr as Siddiq or Allah Ta'ala Anhu, all the way up to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Some of them include um, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz as being from amongst the Khulafa. It's a difference of opinion amongst the ulama in regards to that. However, the four rightly God from Abu Bakr as Siddiq to all the way up to Ali ibn Abi Talib hold firmly to their sunnah, the rightly God al Mahdi'in. And one version he said, Min ba'di, meaning after me, wa tamassaku biha, and hold firmly to it. But in the version we're talking about, which it comes in the Tirmidhi, he says, after holding firm to that, he says, And he says, And this is very important. Because he says, Bite down onto this sunnah of mine. And the sunnah of this Khulafa al Rashidin, bite down on it with your molatif. Describing it in such a way like this, it means that you have a deadlock onto this sunnah. You don't let it go. You don't come up for one moment because this is the safety that you're going to need during the times of khilaf, during the times of different, during the times of fasad, during the times of corruption, during the times of evilness and wickedness. This is the time that we find ourselves in today. And no one can actually tell me that this is not the, not the case, that we're not looking at what we're being experienced. And this is important to understand. So in this section, the author is able to encourage the people to hold firmly. Those who are firm to the book on Sunday, he encouraged them by letting them know the rewards of doing so. Letting them know what Allah has prepared for them. Letting them know that by them having patience, by them having iman, by them being reaffirming and thabit upon their position and not wavering due to the corruption and the many corruptions that they see, Allah has prepared for them a tremendous reward. And we need this encouragement right now. Wallahi, tallahi, wallahi, we need this encouragement right now. Especially at a time where your deen is so weak, where you can just, just a, a, a spook in the shadows can cause you to just discard your deen. And we know this, and I'm not exaggerating. People give up their deen by way of actions. People give up their deen by way of statements. People give up their deen by way of beliefs. People give up their deen by way of ideologies, thoughts, patterns that you shouldn't have. All because you see this happen or seeing that happen. And you're believing that if this happened or that happened, where's Allah? Why Allah not doing anything about it? Why this is happening? Why is that is happening? And you don't understand anything about the sunnah of Allah as a wajal. And you're not strong and firm and adherent to knowledge so that you have this firmness that you need to have. He says in these line of poetry, inshaAllah ta'ala, this segment that we'll be going over, he says, هذا وللمتمسكين بسنة المختار عند فساد ذي الأزمان أجر عظيم ليس يقدر قدره إلا الذي أعطاه للإنسان فرأى أبو داود في سنن له ووراه أيضا أحمد الشيباني أثرا تدمن أجر خمسين امرأ من صحب أحمد خيرة الرحمة 
الرحمن إسناده حسن ومصداق له في مسلم فافهمه فهم بياني أن العبادة وقت حرج حجرة حقا إلي وذاك ذو برهان هذا فكم من هجرة لك أيها السني بالتحقيق لا بأماني ولقد أتى بصداقه في الترمذي لمن له أذنان واعيتان في أجل محي سنة ماتت فذاك مع الرسول رفيقه بجنان هذا مصداق له أيضا أتى في الترمذي لمن له عينان تشبيه أمته بغيث أول منه وآخره فمشتبها فلذاك لا يدر الذي هو منهما قد خص بالتفضيل والرجحان In these line of poetry We're going to do our best by the permission of Allah I'm not going to translate the entire line of poetry section that I read Because we're only going to do Concentrate on the first part Insha'Allah Ta'ala of today Bi'ethnillah because like I said, it's going to be a series of talks that we're going to do on these line of poetries that he brings. But it's tremendous how he lays out this support, first and foremost. All right. So, so that you know, Shaykh Uthameen, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, he comments on this section by saying that the section that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared the goodness or the reward for those who cling firmly to his book and to the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, when would be this time? When would this reward that Allah has prepared, when would be the time that this, where Allah jalla wa'ala reward them? He said it would be during the time of fasad, of corruption. And that's the time that you and I live in. Look at the time we live in. Killing in abundance. We already know the ahadith that's in the Kitab al Fitin, in the Book of Fitin in Sahih Bukhari, of the times of Kataratu Haraj, when Haraj would be in abundance, when Rufi al Ilm, when knowledge would be raised, when um, when Katar Jahl, and Jahl, when Jahl, when, when ignorance would be in abundance. There's not a sin that takes place except that ignorance is a part of it. Do you understand? There's not a goodness that takes place except knowledge was a part of it. So you have to understand both of them counterpoints. Being knowledgeable affords you the opportunity to be good. Being un, being ignorant gives you the opportunity and sad and sadly mistaken to be evil. You have to understand that all of these types of things, all types of killings you can think about from mass murderers, from people who are actually mass murder, people who are serial killers, who chop up bodies. We know this, man. This is seriously. This is serious. This type of killing on a level that you probably haven't seen. Mass murder and killing multiple different people. Actually killing children, infants, killing women. Women are being killed more. As you can look at you can look and read the news. You can just see sad tragedy after tragedy. The times that we live in. Death just hoovering over us. At any moment, at any time. Somebody dying horrifically. No matter if they're one years old, no matter if they're an infant, no matter if they're an elder, no matter if they're a shab, a youth, no matter if they're actually a four adult, it doesn't matter. This is the time that we live in, that corruption on that level, with everything else that's associated with it, with all of the drugs being administered, for all of the stuff that's being taken, the different hummer, the different stuff that's being promoted, whether it's in the hip-hop world outside of it, whether it's amongst the celebrities or outside of it, whether it's even in our neighborhoods, everything that we see, all of the corruption, facade of zaman, that's the time that we see ourselves in. You don't think we don't need these words? How do you think Ibn Uqayyim al Josia and even people such as greater than him, how do you think they made it to the times of their trials? Ahmed ibn Ahmed ibn Hanbal during the times of the Mihna, the great tests and the trials that he had. How you think they made it? They made it by holding firm onto these words, man. They made it by holding firm onto the book of Allah and the Sunnah. That's how they was able to navigate through those times. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, if he saw the Baqarah, highlighting this point, making it very clear. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal says, Do you think, do you not reflect, do you not ponder 
that you're going to enter paradise. You're just going to enter my Jannah. You're going to enter paradise and not be trialed like those who came before you? Pay attention because this how difficult and this how challenging and this how trying that those time periods that Allah has allowed to be upon people to live in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not spare his messengers from this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, they have been touched with distress, with calamities, with afflictions, with annoyance, with harm. They have been touched with these things to the point that they were shaking was Zulzilu. This shaking, what did it do? Hatta Yakula Rasul. To the point it shook so much, the very foundation of what they were upon, it shook so much. It shook so much, Allah says, and to the point that the messenger, that the point that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the point that the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And those who believe along with him They were shaking to the point they made this statement When will the help of Allah come? When will the relief of Allah Azza wa Jal come? When will the help of Allah come? When will the relief from this tragedy and this time of affliction When would it reach us? Allah Azza wa Jal, he end the verse by saying, Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb. It's not the help of Allah ever near. It's not the help of Allah ne ever near. Meaning in terms that Allah's help never too far away. It's always there. Even when you don't perceive it to be there, it's there. Even when you don't perceive it to be there, it's there. But this trying time that happened, that even the messengers of even the messengers, they weren't spared from this trial. Who is who are we to come along now in this time that we find ourselves in to complain of the simple fact that we are here like as if we should never experience this? Do the people think that they will be left alone and say that we believe and not be tried or tested? This is what the concept we need to put in our minds. You are not better than any of the messengers. You are not better than any of the messengers. You are not better than any of the people before us. So Allah shows you this in terms that we tried them just like we're going to try you. So you understanding this knowledge, you having this information, having this information to make you firm and thabit. He says here, Shaykh Amin, he says, So when you have a good time, a time where a period where there's goodness and there's abundance of goodness, there's abundance of good deeds, abundance of righteousness taking place, then it's easy for you to remain upright. Then it's easy for you to be good because you're in an environment and you're in a society that calls to good and that is practicing good. So it's easy. This is not a time of trial. He says, but however, when you find yourself living in a time of trial, of corruption, where everyone, no matter what part that they play in the tolling pool, no matter which part of society, everyone has some type of corruptionist with them. In any office right now, you can think about it, there's some corruption, whether it's the government, whether it's this, whether it's that, it's some, it's some level of corruption that's found. No matter, it's a level of corruption which goes back and ties back to the Kalu. All right, he says, if you find yourself in a time of corruption, then know that the people in there will not be upon istiqamah. It's not going to be a time where people are going to be upright. They're practicing, they're dealing with you. It's not going to be wholesome. They're not going to be truthful. They're going to be smiling in your face the whole time with the knife behind their back, ready to stab you. Do you understand this? They're not going to be good. So when you find yourself in this time, you have to be alarmed. You have to be prepared. You have to be weird. You have to be on your guard. And the only way you can do that is by arming yourself and clinging firmly to kitab was sunnah.
Do you understand? This is what he's saying. This is the only way you're going to be able to navigate between it is that. The person who think that your friend is not your friend. The person who you think is on your side is not on your side. People have other types of agendas because we're in the time of corruption. And you're going to find the soul that's not tainted by the time of corruption is going to be doing the same thing you're doing. They don't have time to intermingle. They don't have time to mix and do this. Pay attention to what he's going to say. He says... In that time, practicing and being upright would be sob. It would be sob. It would be difficult for you to do so. He said, "The end." He said, "The stakam of yimith the hadas zamani wa jidan nafsa hu qarib and bain and nas." He says, "So what happened is the individual who found himself in a time of corruption, trying to remain upright, trying to uphold the tenets of Al Islam, trying to uphold the tenets of the Sunnah, trying to be upright, he's going to find this person is going to be a stranger amongst the people." He's going to be a stranger amongst the people. They're going to look at him like he's the oddball. They're going to look at her like she's the oddball. They're going to look at them like they are the isolated one. Do you understand? They're not going to feel like they're the majority. They're going to be the minority of the minority. I don't think you understand your state and your how. The more you cling firmly to the book of the Sunnah during these times, the more you cling firmly to these two things, the more you're going to become aloof. The more you're going to become strange, even if it's the most closest people to you. If they're not trying to be upon istiqamah, they're going to look at you like you're the one that's the eyeball. Do you understand? He says, وَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءِ And he says this based off a hadith we already know. He says, well, tuba, and there's many different interpretations to the meaning of tuba here. However, we say that it's something that it will be given to you and granted, meaning paradise, for, the, for those who are strangers. And this is an encouragement, and this is also showing you the reward to actually be firm, even during this time. He said, this is an affair that is very clear and it's lucid. انظر إلى رجل صالح في بيت أهله غير صالحين ماذا يجد هذا الابن الصالح من التعب والمشقة والمعانة He says so now to show you that this is real clear let's take a look at an individual who is upon righteousness and upon istiqama and he lives in a home whom the occupants of that home are not upon righteousness they are not upon istiqama his family that he lives with and that he occupy this home with are not trying to do good. They are not trying to be persuaded by the book nor the sunnah. And when we say doing good, we mean by holding firm to the book and the sunnah. They are not trying to do any of that. How many of us right now, this is not our circumstances? Be honest with yourself. How many of us do not find that the little bit of righteousness or the light of iman that we have inside of us is telling us to do right, to hold on, that we live amongst people in our own homes that aren't on the same page, that's not striving to do that? How many of us find ourselves in that situation? How many of us? Be honest. You're living in a house where the people in the house are not on the same page. They don't want to do good. They are not trying to be upon good. It's here and there sparks. And you feel like you are a stranger amongst them. He says, you will find that the person who is trying to be upon this righteousness, who is trying to be upon this karma, they will be weary. They will be tired. They will be, it will be difficult for them to hold on to what they are supposed to hold on. They will be actually, why? Because they are going through this trial and tribulation rarely and right in their very home, man. The concept of home meaning the concept of peace. Everyone says, once I get home, you know, that's, that's my domain. That's where I'm supposed to have a peace of mind. But you come home and you want to worship Allah and you want to be an avid worship of Allah. Right now, you have to understand how deep this goes. And I don't think I'm going to try to paint a picture for you so that you can understand how deep it is. You can be a person who falls short on the daily with your deen, right? But the fact that you are holding on to some aspects of your deen, the one who isn't even at your level going to look at you like you're strange and they're going to look at you like you're weird and you're going to have to have difficulty in dealing with them. And then let's go down even more. You might find an individual who doesn't pray all five prayers, but probably pray one or two prayers and do something like this. The one who doesn't pray at all looks at that person even more strange because that person is trying to do right. Do you see how it triples down? You see that trying to hold on to something good. 
where a, a lot of them are homosexuals. So they're making the people who aren't homosexuals look like something is wrong with them, like they're not getting it right. And they're making the people who aren't wicked, who don't want to give in to orgies, who don't want to give in to interest, Yuba, Reba, don't want to give in to this, gambling, don't want to give in to that. They make them look like they're the eyeballs. They're the ones sticking out. They're the ones that's going against society. They're the ones that are not normal. You are in the facade of man. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You are living in a time of corruption. What do you supposed to do? Why you're in this time? Do you supposed to complain? Do you supposed to complain? Do you supposed to let your tongue run rampant and complain and point your finger at Allah Azza wa Jal and say, how can I be in this situation? Or do you supposed to take it as an honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still allow you in this wicked time, in this most wicked place, that He allow you to still hold on to the book and the sunnah? Do you supposed to hold that as an honor because it's a never from Allah Jalla wa Allah that He still allow you to hold firm? The Shaykh says, "Wandur ila rajulin salim fi bayti ahlu salihun." Fadha thani yasalu alaihi salah. He says, "So and then look at the second scenario where an individual find themselves living. He's a righteous person, but he lives in a house that the occupants of the house wants to be righteous. So therefore, his practicing of that righteousness will be easy. You understand?" He said, "Bala ufasad yura gariban." He said, "But if it's the case that that home that he or she occupies." It's the opposite, and they are corrupted. Then he or she is going to be looked at as the stranger, and at home. Because he's going to be, he's going to be a person that is what? Because he is going to be a person that is part amongst the people that's righteous. But he that saw that insana in the facade is a man he cannot enter the other ma ajr and kama sayyid bainu wa alaf rahimahullah. So he says. That if you find an individual who is righteous during the time of corruption, then his reward with Allah is greater. You see? If you find an individual that is holding firm, whether it's an ayat, or whether it's two, or whether it's the whole entire book, whether it's a hadith, whether it's two, whether it's the whole entire sunnah, mujmal, well, Mujma in general, as well as specifically from that of the knowledge of the Sunnah that reaches him, that he hold firmly to that, she hold firmly to that. During that time of corruption, the reward is greater. As the author said, and we're only going to do the first line of poetry. Remember, we said it, and then we'll stop. And this will be a continuation, inshallah. He says in that first line of poetry that he says, Hada walil mutamasikina bi sunnatil muqtari inda fasadi dil azmani. That this reward that has been prepared by Allah Azza wa Jal will be for those who hold firmly to the sunnah, the chosen sunnah, the selected sunnah during the times of these trying times of corruption. Ajrun azimun laysa yaqdiru qadrahu illa alladhi a'atahu lil insani. Meaning that that this that will be given to that person who will firmly mean it will be a great and tremendous reward whom the value the extent of that reward is only known to the one who is the giver of man and we know that is Allah Azza wa Jal Shikr Dabini says that the one who hold firmly to the sunnah will have a tremendous reward and none knows the extent or the value of that reward except the one who have given man who have who is the giver of man and that is Allah Azza wa Jal so you don't even know the reward or the extent of that reward that is awaiting you while you are going through the trial and tribulations of the time of corruption. You find it hard, don't you? You want to do right. You're just trying to make your five, right? And you might be living in a house full of Muslims and none of them pray along with you. And you're just there praying your prayer. You find it difficult, right? It's difficult upon your soul. You're inside a home. Where you have a full of Muslims and none of them praying but you, right? You might live in a society or a community where you have a group or full of Muslims and none of them really trying to hold on but separate few and selective, right? You might find this trying, this is difficult, man. To see that you are trying to uphold that which your Lord has told you to uphold. And you come outside and you come out and you see an individual, beard long as you or even longer. An individual have a hijab, right? Or an individual have niqab, or an individual have jilbab, etc., etc., but they don't behave in a way that they're trying to get nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
or hold firmly. They are doing everything that the kufar are doing and they want to be closer to the kufar. You find this, that you see a person who has, who's a Muslim, who's in name, who's actually more closer, who are taking friends from amongst the kuffar, who are taking them as advisors, who are taking them as confidants, who are taking them as people who they can put in their trust, the people that they can go to more than they're taking the believers. You find this, as Allah said, لَا يَتَّكِذُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْكَافِرِينَ أَوْلِيَا مِن دُونِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah said, you are not, the believers are not to take those who are disbelievers as awliya, as friends, protectors, and helpers, and confidants besides the believers. Even though this is stated, it's not practice, except with a few. It's difficult, is what we're saying. It's mushakka, it's difficult during this time to try to hold on while everyone around you are doing wrong. Where everything around you are calling to that. It's difficult. Do you understand? Now let's go back to the hadith where the Prophet he told them that if you live after me, from amongst you, whoever live, he's gonna see many differing. That's gonna be in opposition to what is right. That's gonna be in opposition to my sunnah. Then he said, Hold firmly to my sunnah, hold firmly to my sunnah. Then he described. How to hold firmly to his sunnah. He didn't just say hold firmly to the sunnah and the sunnah my rightly God Khalifa. He didn't just say that. He told you how to hold firmly to it. He told you how to lock on to it. He says, oh, Bite down on it with your molar teeth. You want to get a good bite? You want to get a good grip? You want to get a good lock? You put it between your molar teeth. It's not going anywhere. That's the point. You bite down on it, you hold firm on it because this is going to be the life jacket. This is going to be the safety that's going to get you through that times of trial and fitna. But you're not going to make it through if you let up for one second. You're going to be swallowed whole just like every else one around you, everyone else around you. You're going to be swallowed whole and then you're wondering where your deen went. Where's my deen? I remember I used to get up for night prayer. I mean, I used to always make my five. I remember I used to do this. I remember I used to fast. I remember I used to read the book of Allah. I remember I had this surah and that surah memorized. I remember I knew this hadith and that hadith. Now you don't know none of it. It's really faintly there. Because you wasn't biting down on it with your molar teeth. You weren't biting down on it with your molar teeth. You did not hold on. You let up. You thought it was okay to take a breather. It wasn't. It wasn't okay. It never was okay. You have to hold on that until death reaches you. That's when it's okay. It's not even okay to lift up for one moment. You have to still bite down on it. That's what he's describing here. The reward is that it's prepared. And he didn't just base this off of anything of himself. He says in the next line of poetry where he got this from, he says, He says, where did he get it from? He says, this was reported by Abu Dawood in his Sunan and also from Ahmed Shaybani, Iman Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Musnad, that there are narrations that says, أَثَرًا تَدَمَّنَ أَجْرَ خَمْسِينَ مُرَأً مِنْ صَحْبِ أَحْمَدَ خِيرَةِ الرَّحْمَانِ He brought narrations in both of these tremendous books of hadith about the reward that's entailed and that is comprised of the reward of 50 companions. 50 companions who have accompanied Ahmed. Here he used the name of the Prophet Wasallam which is known as Ahmed, was one of his names, who is the selective of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ar-Rahmani, the most merciful. So here he's saying to you that I didn't, what I'm saying to you, I didn't get from myself. These are narrations that have been reported that the people during the times of trial and tribulation and corruption, if they hold firmly to the book of Allah and the Sunnah, they will be equated in this term, like the reward of 50 companions. Do you understand that? 50 companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their reward would be that great. Holding firmly during that time, it's having like 50 rewards or 50, 50 companions, you're going to have that equal in that reward. Shaykh Rathameen, he says, here he mentioned that Iman Ahmed Abu Dawood, Rahimahumullah, they mentioned that narrations that comprise that the one who hold firmly to the Sunnah during the times of corruption 
that for him is 50 rewards from 50 campaigns. He has the reward of 50 campaigns. He has reward for him, 50 campaigns of the Prophet and this hadith is collected by Abu Dawood as well as a Tirmidhi. And he said, no doubt this is a tremendous reward. Meaning, he says, meaning that if you hold firmly, hold firmly, what do we mean hold firmly? What do we mean cling firmly? As the Prophet said, bite down with your molity to both the sunnah and you follow it during the times of the trials and corruptions and the people are in opposition, and you're being in opposition to what the people are upon, then for you will be the reward of 50 companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Isnaduhu wa hasanu wa misdaqu lahu fi muslimin fafhamhu fahma bayani Then he said about the chain, the, the chain, the isnad of these texts that he's talking about. He said they're isnad or hasan. They are good. Okay? Let's take a little walk over to Mustalah Hadith. If it's hasan, we know that hasan is what we say a grade lesser than sahih. Alright? Hasan is a grade lesser than sahih. And he says it has also been confirmed. Meaning these reports has also been confirmed in sahih Muslim. So he said, فَفْهَمْهُ فَهْمَ bayani." So he said, understand this with a clear understanding, with absolute clarity. Understand this point. Understand that the reward that is awaiting for the person who remain firm upon their deen that doesn't shake because everyone else is doing it. It doesn't break because everyone else is doing it. It doesn't fold because everyone else is doing it. It doesn't change because everyone else is doing it. It doesn't go down because no one else is following them. They don't care. They understand that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that what? You are upon the haq law kunta wahida. Law kunta wahida. Even if you are only one, that the truth is not in large numbers or with the majority. The truth is with the person who is upon that truth, even if he's only one and everyone else is not upon that truth. You are firmly upon it. This is what we're saying. This is not a slogan that I can just use against Ahlul Bid'ah. Do you understand? It's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying reality, the time of safety, the time of being hold firmly, is this is the point here we need to hold on to. He says here, this is a report that has been confirmed in Sahih Muslim. So understand it. And when he says Fahm here, you have many different levels of comprehension. The ulama, they break that comprehension in six levels. The first being the ilm. And that ilm, as they explain, can also break down into six levels. And that ilm is the ilm al yaqeen, have an absolute certainty and conviction and a surety of the thing that you absolutely believe in. And no, that means there is no room for shakiness. There's no room for wavering. There is no room for doubt. There is no room for being confused. There is no room. That's what that means. That means you know for surety, absolute certainty, that this thing is definitely the truth and it's definitely going to take place and you're not going to shake. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, As for those who believe in their Lord, As for those who believe, They know that this is the truth from their Lord. As for those who believe, they know that this is the truth from their Lord. They don't have to guess. They're not saying, well, you know, let me look at this. Maybe if I look at it from this way, how come so-and-so over here? How come the Kufar are doing this? How come this is going down? They're not doing that. They're not wavering. They're not going to pop up later on just because it's the holiday with a tree inside the house, man. They're not going to do that. They're not going to pop up later on just because it's a holiday and everyone from the Kufar are doing it and talking about the children. They're not going to pop up with a tree. This is, what they, this is not what they're going to do. They're not going to do that. They're not going to pop up on Valentine's Day with some damn heart and candy, man. They're not going to do that. This is not what they're going to do. They're not going to pop up celebrating the Prophet's birthday, the Milad, and pitting trees and, and, and ornaments. They're not going to do that. They're not going to waver because they're going to stick firm to the Sunnah. 
They're going to stick firm to that which the Messenger of Allah was upon. This is the individuals doing the triumphs of corruption. Just because everybody else is having the holiday spirit, you got to join in. You just cannot allow your deen to do some dictating here. You got to go get a Christmas tree and then try to cover it up and lie about the kids. It's for the children. No, it's for you. It's not for no children. Who told you the children need a tree? Who told you they need that? You're the one instilling that into the children. Because of the society you're in, you're weak with your iman, you're weak with your comprehension, you're weak with your ilm, you're weak with your faith. That's the point. So don't tell me it got something to do with the children, it got something to do with you. You're the one who got that tree. You wanted the decoration. You wanted that certain thing because it was you. It wasn't them. Don't use them. Don't use them. It was you. And you're not holding firm doing facade of zaman. Because everyone around you is doing this and doing that. So you're supposed to do it too. Monkey see, monkey does, huh? You're supposed to do it too. No. The, the ram, the, the reason, the understanding. Fahfamhu. What is he saying? Fahamhu fahma bayani. If you have absolute understanding of what's being said in these narrations, you're not going to falter. You ain't got one period, one time that any of the companions ever went out and got a tree and put it in the house. Show me one time. I just wait. We can look through all the books you want to look at. First of all, you probably don't even know where to look at. But just we look at all the books you want to look at. Let's go find it about the companions and show me that they got a tree, man. And you don't think that it wasn't Kufa around them? Oh, so you didn't think the Romans was there? You didn't think the Yahoods was there? You didn't think none of this was, it was around? It wasn't no Jews? It wasn't no Romans? It wasn't no Christians? It wasn't no Persians? It wasn't people upon shirt? You don't think none of the thing was going on? That none of these ayad, these holidays was going on during the time of the campaigns, huh? The campaigns went so deep, man, that the calendar that was used by the Kufar, they wouldn't use it. They would be different in terms of using that calendar because they didn't want to resemble them in any way. But yet and still, you find a way and an excuse and make that seem like this is the way. You understand? And then you want to sit here and say, well, you guys are backwards. You guys are stuck in the, the Stone Ages. You guys are this. No, you guys are holding on to what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Abdu alayhi ha bin nawajidi. Fa sunnati. Fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafa' al-rashidin al-mahadiyin. Hold firmly to my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa' al-rashidin. Abu Bakr never had a tree. Umar never had a tree. Uthman ibn Affan never had a tree. Ali ibn Abi Talib never had a tree. Where's their tree? Where's they Valentine's heart, huh? You would say, well, maybe that wasn't. No, Valentine's is old. <laughs> Valentine's is old. These, these crazy backward holidays, which is steeped in shirk and all types of festivities and stuff that has been instituted, it's old. And yet you still want to find it, huh? Follow it, huh? No stronger firm because this is the point. You're coming into Islam with all of that baggage and you're not removing that baggage. You have people who come into Islam still Christian and heart. People coming to Islam still Jews in heart. People coming to Islam still Mushriks in heart. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu dukhulu fi silmi kafa. Allah said, Oh, you who believe into Islam wholeheartedly. The ulama of tafsir, they said, meaning empty out your cup. Other words, don't have no remnants. Because this ayah was really directed to the people of the book, meaning the, the, uh, the, the people of the book, both the Jews and the Christians, in terms of leave off of those things wholeheartedly and firmly to Islam. Learn that which is supposed to be done. But no, you're coming with all of that baggage. So now you want to do it. The kufar got rosary beads, so now we're going to make thicker beads. You don't see it? I want to use thicker beads. I, yeah, we know that some of the early mass said that it's permissible to use it if you can't use your hands. Yeah, we understand all of that. But you want to use thicker beads now? This is what you want to use? They want to, you know, because they got rosary beads. Well, they got this and we got to, we got to have to have that. But they got this, we got to have to have that. You understand? And this is a concept that people have. And people are going to have it. But this is why you see that in the hadith of Naqat. Huh? Alayth ibn Waqat. What did he say? What did he say though? He said that the Jews had a certain tree that they would hang their weapons on. They call it Da'atu and Waqat. He says, So Ya Rasulullah, make for us a tree that we can hang our weapons up. The Prophet says, SubhanAllah. He said, You have done what the people of Bani Israel have done to Musa. Make for us an ilah like the Fir'aun and them have an ilah. Waliyadu billah. You have left Islam kafaratun. You have left Islam after you have believed. You understand? So when you start talking about, no, let's have what they have. No, you are wavering. You are faulty. He said, You don't have true faham. You don't have true faham. This is the point we're trying to make. You don't have true understanding. If you're sitting there saying that it's okay to do these things, no. You don't have true understanding. It's not okay. And if you have a problem that you can't do these things, then you still don't have true understanding. Something is wrong. 
you're supposed to find everything which Islam actually commands to be good. That's what you're supposed to find. You're supposed to take comfort in that. And everything that is prohibited, you're supposed to find that you stay away from it. That's how we're supposed to get. I'm not saying I'm at that level, but that's where we need to be at, inshallah. I'm going to finish it last. I'm not going to go into the next line of poetry, but that's pretty much it that he mentioned. So stay tuned for the next line of poetry that he would go over. And inshallah ta'ala, we wanted to just bring that. We will be doing, um, so stay tuned, we will be doing like a selected series of this section. Just to remind us, man, during the time that we find ourselves living on, we need to encourage one another a lot. We are dealing with a lot of battles, man. We are dealing with losing our children. We are dealing with losing our souls, not alone losing the people that are around us. And the society that we live in, we find that everybody is not holding on firmly like the end. You know, so-and-so that used to be your friend, even probably gave you shahada, they no longer practice in Islam the way that you thought they would, right? You know, so-and-so who used to be down the street from you, used to be really firm. You say, well, that brother was tight. Well, that sister was tight. She no longer now. She's loose. She's no longer doing this. She's no longer doing that. Don't you see this all the time? You don't see the cycle? You can, you can just go on a person's timeline. Go on a person page right now. You can see the changes fluctuate from the Iman. The moment she got garbs on, you can see a period of that time. And then the time the garments goes off, and then you see a period of that time. And then you see a period of time when she's trying to slowly come back. Same thing with the brother. You see a period of time that the moment he's like this, the next minute he's putting up all types of smut stuff, this up, that up, that up, right? And then he goes right back down. This is what you see. And this shows you the pattern that we have with our Iman. You might say, well, you can't tell my life by my page. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Do you understand that? Yes, I can. If you like a filthy statement, if you're promoting a filthy statement, or you're promoting a filthy meme, if you're doing this, this, and that, that's in you. Yes, it is. Because good people don't promote bad. That's just period. Good people are not going to produce bad. That's just period. So we have to be honest with ourselves in terms of our graduating and fluctuating within our amen. Because it's going up and it's going down and we have to aid and help one another. And that's not the case what's going on a lot, a lot of times. And you see this trickle effect within the masjid. And somebody asks me, they say, well, what is it? Why does the masjid seem like not to be the, the cure or the help? A person, he prays his father, the person, he's in some of the classes, the person, he fasts on Ramadan, he's doing this, he's doing that. But then he's still doing X, Y, and Z. He's still not this, this, and that. Because you have to understand one thing. It was never guaranteed that just because you do the actions, you were saved. That's not it. You have to be given the tawfiq from Allah Azza wa Jal to allow that stuff to seep into you. It's the sincerity. It's the niyat. It's the conformity. It's that ikhlas. That's what it is. So just because you're doing the action doesn't mean you were guaranteed that you were going to be saved. The hypocrites during the time of the Prophet something they pray just like he prayed. They fast just like they fast. Did you not see the khawarij? <laughs> the first group that ever went a deep, went a, went a straight, they did all of these different things. You understand? So you find that many people during the time of Islam that this is what they would do. You will find that there are many people don't get caught up in the fact of the actions. And he have a line of poetry here that we might come across where he mentioned about it's not be surat al amal, it's not the form, the actions themselves, and he explains that we don't get caught up in that. We get caught up in the fact that it's something else and greater and deeper than that. Okay? So you might see so-and-so and sister so-and-so at the masjid a lot. That doesn't mean that so-and-so and sister, brother so-and-so is actually where you think they're at. That doesn't mean that. Yes, it's a testification if a person loves the, the masjid and so forth. Amen. We know that. But don't take things out of its context. I only wanted to bring that and I try to drag that on. Alhamdulillah. Um, as we said before, this line of poetry is found in both the kitab was sunnah. Because he, he mentioned this. He says, فَوَرَى Abu Dawood, Alhamdulillah. He mentioned that. So when you hear me speak and when you hear the ulama, they, they author poems or you hear them talking, they're going to be using proofs and evidence for what they're saying. So it's going to be based off Kitab wa Sunnah. And it's helping us understand that. I didn't bring you the narrations that he's alluding to. However, like we said, he tells you that these narrations are based off what can be found in Musnad ibn Ahmed, Abu Dawood, as well as what can be found in Sahih Muslim in the Book of Fitin. All right, these narrations surround that. And what is it? That means that the one who hold firmly to the Book of the Sunnah during the times of trials and tribulations and corrupted times, their reward would be greater or their reward would be like 50 companions. All right, do you understand that? That's what he's trying to say. And that's what he's explaining. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation is definitely for myself. We have said it's correct. And for Allah, Jalla wa Ala, Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, Ashhadu Allah, Ilaha Anta, Astaghfiruka, Tawilid, Jazakallah, Khair.